All right, then we're going to switch to English now. Um, I'm going to say some things so you know who's the speaker and he's going to help me. So let's start. Our next speaker is um, from the US, as you might know, and he's been making videos about his geocaching adventures since 2011 and has gained more than 7 million views doing so. He's been geocaching since 10 years and his and he's inspiring um, with an undying passion and energy. And why he is here, why he's in Hanover, um, Daniel's going to tell you. Last week I received a call from Johnny. It was on Thursday, right? Yeah. And he asked me if I have somebody who could be on stage tonight. I've been here before, so it could be me. But uh, I realized that I have a guest for this week, and this is Joshua. Um, Joshua is in Hanover because Hanover is like the capital of geocaching. Who knows geocaching anyway? Geocaching? Yeah, okay. Somehow. Um, so the city of Hanover and the Sparkasse, they use geocaching in their marketing mix. And so I... Suggest, uh, I hate this word. Ich habe ihn empfohlen. To invite Joshua to make his amazing videos about the geocaches in, in Hanover. So I'm glad that Joshua followed that invitation and we have a wonderful time here in Hanover and doing a lot of geocaches and a lot of videos and drinking a lot of beer too. Yeah. And that's why he's here. And um, do you want to say something more? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, Daniel. Um, it's the geocaching vlogger. Please welcome Joshua Johnson to the stage. Hello, liebe Freunde. That is the only uh, German you will hear tonight because I only took one year of German in school and all I remember from that, and that was long ago, and all I remember from that is uh, Falco is prima. That's all I remember. And uh, uh, you told me uh, Falco is actually dead and he's sad and he's not even from Germany. So, uh, so much for connecting to my audience. <laughs> So uh, a little background about me. Um, my parents were always uh, stage parents. They wanted me to become famous. They wanted me to become a celebrity. Um, so every time that uh, I had a family gathering, my, my parents uh, made me sing in front of my whole family. Um, so you take that. Another thing about my parents you need to know is that my parents were also Elvis Presley fans. They were obsessed with Elvis Presley. So you take the fact that you make your son perform over here, and on the other side, you love Elvis, and you put it together. And when I was a junior high student, probably about 13 years old, my mother came up to me. She knocked on my door, and she knocked knock, and she went, Josh, you're not going to believe this. The county fair is coming up, and the talent show is coming up. And I think it would just be fantastic if you would do your junior high Elvis impersonation in front of our whole town. <laughs> and as a junior higher, I was like, Mom, sign me up, okay? <laughs> so she signed me up for the junior talent show. And it, it, it proved to you that I'm not lying. I actually have real footage on video of that. Enjoy. <laughs> So my parents wanted me to become famous. Thank you. I can still do a little. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so, uh -huh. so uh, my parents wanted me to, to be famous, and just uh, long story short, I never really became. I really never became famous. Um, but I became famous in a little bit strange a way, in a very small uh, niche. Uh, another thing you need to know about me is that I'm a, I'm a dad, and uh, here is uh, my family as they were uh, very young. There they are, uh, three kids. This was 10 years ago. And if you're a parent, uh, and I know we have a lot of young people in here, so maybe you can't relate, but when you're a parent, you, as your kids grow up, you get very, very nervous as they get older. That was a picture taken uh, a couple days ago. And why, the reason you get nervous is time goes by so fast and you want to capture every single moment. So seven years ago, I didn't have a smartphone. And so I decided um, I want to start capturing the memories of my kids so I can remember what they were like when they were little. So I, I checked Craigslist. Do you guys have checked Craigslist? Do you know what that is? Uh, it's like a, a listing site. Uh, and I met a guy in a mall parking lot. 
and I bought a flip camera, which is a really kind of cheap, cheap camera. And so I wanted to test it out. And I was like, what am I, what am I going to test it out on? And I just thought, of course, I'm going to test it out on my favorite hobby of all time, and that is geocaching. Um, many of you know what geocaching is. It's a high-tech treasure hunt where people you find uh, containers using GPS technology. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to test it out with uh, well, the, the flip camera with, uh, with this by geocaching. So this is my very first video that I ever posted to YouTube. And it, it was quite courageous for me to kind of put myself out there. If you've ever put yourself on YouTube or social media sometimes, it can be a little bit of a courageous thing. But I put myself out there, and I'm a little embarrassed to show you. This is my very first video seven and a half years ago. So I, I just bought this new flip camera, and I'm just giving it a try for the very first time. I'm at uh, a geocache. Here we go, I'm gonna try to find the sucker. This looks suspicious. <laughs> there it is. Found it. Score. I gotta go sign it now. So the train for this one was a, uh, I think a three and a half, and it said the hint was to bring a buddy. So no buddy needed today, as as it was a little bit of a climb. Um, all right. Very cool. Bye. That video, that video is so embarrassing, all right? Uh, the camera was shaky. I held it too close to my face. You were looking up my nose. Um, I didn't tell a good story. The cinematography was horrible, all right? But I made a commitment to myself. I said, you know what? I enjoy this. I enjoy putting myself out there on YouTube. So I kept on putting videos out. And I put more and more videos out. And I decided to make a commitment to put at least one geocaching video online every, uh, every week and to keep doing that till, till I decided to stop doing that. And uh, sure enough, my videos got a little better. I got a better camera. The cinematography was better. My storytelling was better. Um, I had great interviews with kids, the interactions. It was, it was great. And I started getting positive comments from people that said that they really enjoyed my videos. And if you've ever gotten, yeah, exciting, uh, meeting people. And if you've ever um, put something up on social media, you get positive feedback, that just makes you want to do it, do it more. So. Um, going to geocaching events. And so the comments were positive. And then, then about three years into, into putting out the videos, some of the comments got very interesting and they were very surprising. I would get comments from uh, parents that would say that they would uh, put their kids to sleep at night watching my videos. <laughs> and they're, instead of reading books, sad, okay? <laughs> um, but then they said, but it inspired us to go out and create our own adventures and get outside and spend time together. I would get messages from people that had uh, depression and anxiety and said that uh, the joy that I showed in my videos inspired them to see that, that there's a big world to, to explore and that there's joy to be had. Um, messages from people that, that spend a lot of time on the couch and inspire them to get out and explore the world. Um, and I quickly realized that this wasn't just about me putting up silly videos, but actually what I was doing was impacting people's lives and changing people's lives. And um, it really changed the way I looked at how I, how I did videos. Um, about three years ago, I met a boy named Michael Costello. This was at a geocaching event. Let me tell you a little bit about Michael. Um, Michael came up to me and his parents came up to me. He's told me um, he had, uh, when he was born, he had a congenital heart disease and uh, he had a heart defect. And when he was 13 years old, he had heart surgery. And when he had the heart surgery, he was in the hospital recovering. And he told me that while he was in the hospital recovering, he was watching my videos. And when he got out of the hospital, um, what part, of, part of his recovery was to get out and geocache, just like he saw me geocaching. And it made his heart stronger. And, and the year later, I met him again at another event. And he, that's my daughter. We're hanging out together and we became friends. And he actually helped me work at my booth. We became friends. Um, last winter, uh, uh, winter 2017, I got a call and found out that Michael, um, unfortunately, had passed away. And as you can imagine, I was, I was pretty heartbroken. Uh, as a father myself, I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to lose, lose somebody like that. And so I felt like, oh my gosh, my YouTube channel, the purpose of it is to make make people's lives better. It is. So what can I do to encourage the family? So I made a video and I encouraged geocachers from all over the world to um, go geocaching on Michael's birthday, which is a week after he passed away. 
and we called it uh, geocaching for Michael Day. And I encouraged people to take photos and to send me videos of them geocaching on that day. And I was shocked. Um, I got from all over the world, I got videos and pictures from Russia, from Germany, from France, from Canada, all over the United States, of people encouraging the family. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, just a video on YouTube, how much um, it could impact people and motivate people to do things. And it's kind of like uh, the ripple effect. What I do for a living is I speak to young people for a living, and we talk about the idea of when we, you do one small act of courage, uh, it's like a rock, a rock that gets uh, thrown into a body of water. And when the rock hits, there's a ripple, and it impacts and changes the whole, the whole lake. And that was Michael's Costello in his life. What he did impacted and changed lives um, by inspiring people, by, by getting out there and geocaching and make his, making himself stronger. And I realized that my videos were like that. It's crazy to me to think that by accident in some mall parking lot, I just made a video one day, randomly, put it up to YouTube. But it was that act that set the course to impact hundreds, thousands, and uh, honestly, millions of people that watch my videos. And so, um, and I just think that's amazing. So I guess uh, the point of what I'm gonna say, and I, I understand like, um, you know, a lot of, I don't have a lot of technical things to share with you today, but I just wanted to share with you the heart of the reason why I do things. And I think we all have a pebble. Like, I, we all, I think we all have a rock, whether it's uh, developing incredible um, tennis technology or whether it's um, uh, developing an amazing app that helps people. I think whatever we do, uh, we have to do it with the mindset of how can we make people's lives better and how can we impact people for better. Um, so, uh, I will never be Elvis, uh, I will never be as famous as, as him, but hopefully what I do when I continue to throw those pebbles out in that pond, I hope that it impacts others, and I think that's our job as well. So, Duncan Shane, thank you. Thank you.